The Orbeck Femto Bolt is a Microsoft licensed Azure Connect design. Let's check it out. Okay, I know why you tuned in. You sick dogs. Last year, Microsoft turned over manufacturing of the Azure Connect to licensed third parties. This is one of those cameras, the Orbeck Femto Bolt. In the box, we have a power supply, 12 volts, 2 amps. We have the camera along with a USB-C cable, USB-A on one side, USB-C on the other, with nice little screws to keep it in place. The cable is 1.5 meters long. On each side of the camera, we have two M2.5 attachment points. On the bottom of the camera, we have a quarter 20 mount. On the back of the camera, we have a sync port, the USB-C port, and the power supply port. Let's compare it to a couple of predecessors. On the right, we have the Xbox 360 Connect. It was launched in 2010. On the left, we have the Xbox One Connect. It came out in 2013. The Azure Connect on which the Femto Bolt is based, was launched in 2019. One difference between the Femto and the Azure Connect is that the Femto does not have built-in microphones. Not only are the older Connects larger, they also have a lot more cabling that goes with them. Taking a look at the Orbeck website, you can see that there are a wide variety of 3D camera offerings. They are an NVIDIA preferred partner. This one looks pretty nice. It works with the NVIDIA Isaac Robotics platform. Today, we are taking a look at one of the time of flight cameras, the Femto Bolt. There are three current versions of the Femto, the Bolt, the Mega, and the Mega One. It's a very informative website. If we hit the Buy Now button, we can see that it's $418 currently. Here's a list of some possible applications. Here's the data sheet that you can download. I will leave a link below. It gives you all the good info. Here's the product specifications. Here's all the resolutions of the different cameras and the image format. It weighs 335 grams. Here's the dimensions. It consumes 4.35 watts on average. There's even measured drawings. You gotta like that. All sorts of good stuff. Head over and check it out. The SDK for the cameras has its own web page. The cameras are cross-platform. You can run them on Mac, Windows, or Linux. Android, too. There are also wrappers for ROS, ROS2, and Unity. Let's hop on over and pick up the Orbeck Viewer. You will also need to set up the UDEV rules for the camera. There's a script for that in the SDK. For the Jetson, we want to grab the ARM64 version. Be careful, there's a Mac OS version that runs on ARM64. That will not work. Don't ask me how I know. Then we can extract it. And then we can scroll down and launch the viewer. I need to change microphones here. Go to color. 3840 by 2160. Let's turn the stream on. There we are. Oh, let's turn on the depth stream. 1024 by 1024. Let's just try 640 by 576. Just as we expect. And there's an IR stream that we can look at. Mm, that's pretty dark. Visual range. Ooh, there we go. It's a little bit better. And there's an IMU inside the unit. So you can take a look at that. So if you're on a robot and you want to move the machine around, you can keep track of the IMU position. Okay, let's take a look at the point cloud.
So it's pretty much what we expect. The camera is pretty close to me, so you see you get this big shadow here. Let's use the image as a texture map. There we go. It's a little bit better. Camera's a little bit below me, so can't see the top of the cap. It's what you expect from a good RGB point cloud. It's hard to control the mouse. <laughs> Hard to control the mouse and move at the same time. So it gives you an idea of what's available from the views. Color camera is interesting. It has a whole bunch of different resolutions. Let's turn it off for a second. 2560 by 1440, 1920 by 1080. This is only a 1920 by 1080 monitor. That's kind of what you expect here. It's interesting the color fall off between close to the window here and towards the back of the room. That's probably pretty close to what it looks like in real life. So that's a good color match. Let's move on. When we go to the Orbeck account on GitHub, there's a wide variety of repositories for us to peruse. One is the Orbeck SDK. There's a Python version of that. We have interfaces for ROS and ROS2. There's also a wrapper for Azure Connect. Let's go to the Orbeck SDK repository. Let's pull in the repository. Um, paste. Make a directory. We will use CMake and Make that will build the libraries and the examples. You can see we've built all the examples here, quite a few of them to look at. Let's go look in the bins. How about color viewer? There we are. <laughs> Amazing, it worked. Just as we predicted. Let's see what else is there. Depth viewer. Sure enough, there's the depth view. Infrared viewer. That's more of what we expect out of the infrared viewer. So you can go through the examples here on the Orbeck SDK. The examples are written in C or C++. Here's a program I wrote about 10 years ago. A little bit of a tug to get to run over here in the new world. Let's go full screen. That sounds like fun. We have a GLSL shader going on in the background here. You can turn that on and off. Let's switch over to our point cloud view. One of the things that's a little bit different than the other programs we've looked at is this is programmable. There's a timeline. So if I hit the start button, I have a little timeline animation that goes on here.
the canvas stationary, of course. We're just taking a look at the point cloud from different perspectives. I can set the minimum and the maximum. Let's lower the maximum down a little bit. So typically that's how you would do background culling. Oh no, I don't want to lose the shark here. Ah, there we go. Everything is good. Here's the RGB color camera. I'm not moving, of course, the image is. I'm not moving, the image is. There's a shark. Come here. You can see he casts quite the shadow on me. There's an illuminator in the camera itself infrared so that's what the shadows are coming from that's where the shadows are coming from that's kind of fun to play with various toolkits for programming the microsoft connects have been around for 10 years now so there's a lot of source material to draw from Let's take a look at the older version. You can see it has about a quarter of the resolution. Let's move on. I wrote a Docker file for the Jetson. It's just a sample file. It allows you to run ROS2 and the launch file for the Femto Bolt. You can use it as a launching point for your own Docker file. On the Jetson Hex account on GitHub, there's a repository named Femto-ROS2. Let's clone that repository and then switch over to that repository's directory. Then we grab our build instruction and build our Docker image. We can look at our Docker images to make sure it's there. Now let's run our image. Password. Let's launch the Orbeck camera and start up our viz. So we can see the topics here. The camera is from the Orbeck. So you can get the IMU info, compressed images, points. There's a ton of different parameters you can set for the camera. It's basically all the camera settings. Okay, let's take a look at the camera. Let's add topic. Hmm, so the camera works. I'm not surprised at this point. There's our color image. Let's add a point cloud. Okay, let's set our frame. Camera depth frame. That looks pretty familiar. 
We could use a little bit of color here. Use the rainbow. On startup, you can set the RGB image to be the texture for the point cloud. I'll leave that as an exercise to the reader. I just wanted to give you a feel for how you would get this up and running in ROS2. Hey, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you have not already, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.